Well, hey folks, how's it all going? And welcome back, an old man. What are you gonna go? Oh, looking at the Weavers, looking at the Weavers. You read the description. We're gonna cook on a highly, <laughs> highly modified Weber kettle today, and it's the Green Goddess right there. Let's pull it out and uh, take a closer look and get it fired up. In the meantime, let's take a look at those ribs. All right, there it is. And you're saying, oh my goodness, what have you done to that thing? Folks, the, the last mod I did was that side table over there. That was a lot of fun to do. And I just used some common material found at Home Depot. I'll leave the link down below if you want to watch that. One of the easiest mods that I've done, and if you're looking at this other Weber Kettle 22 inch over here and you're saying, what's with the height difference in there, is a leg extension. And that is so super simple to do. You don't even have to, all you gotta do is take the legs out, slide some conduit in all the way down to the bottom, and I'll give you the links. And uh, I'll leave the link down below how you can do that. Wooden handles and uh, the old man temp gauges and putting another gauge on this side so you can watch when you're indirect is and and what, oh, what else and a hinge hinge is easy to do too all the mods I do folks are easy to do remember if I can do it so can you so let's get this set up and ready to roll on those ribs all right let's take a look at the setup before we put the ribs on and you can see uh, we've got I don't know if you can see it in there but I've got the slow and sear in there with water in the water trough. Uh, Sloan Sear is probably the first accessory I bought for my Weber kettle, and it is uh, it has been solid. You know, people have, there's a lot of critics out there, a lot of love hate on the uh, Sloan Sear, but I'm one of those who love it, and it's probably one of the few things I haven't modified. So, works great. Got a water pan in there, uh, a drip tray more or less, catch the grease from those ribs, and a couple chunks of hickory, and uh, we'll, we'll, let's get those ribs on. All right, so for uh, after about 20 minutes, you can see where we got. Bottom vent is wide open. Top vents, you can see where that is, a quarter or a third. And uh, we're right around that 175 mark, shooting for 200. Going to try and hold it there uh, for about, oh, I don't know, an hour or two. And uh, then we'll bump things up a little bit and cover them and uh, put some other things on the grill. You stay tuned for that. All right, folks, uh, right around two hours. Look at the temp there. I tell you what, 225 dialed herself in really nice. I have not taken a look. Let's take a look, see, shall we? Oh, yeah. Coming along really kind of nice. Give them a quick spritz here and keep on going. You keep on watching. All right, three hours into it, folks. Uh, you can see I did uh, pump the temp up a little bit. Still got some nice smoke rolling out of there, though. We'll get some nice color on those ribs. Look at that, folks. So we're gonna keep going here. Let me get our potatoes, start getting our taters and carrots ready to put on, and uh, you keep on watching. All right, I got a couple potatoes, uh, some carrots, and some whole mushrooms that I cut in half, a little bit of the zangs in there, and then some, some of my favorite nature seasoning. Just give her a toss there, folks. That's all I gotta do. Nice and simple, just like that. I'm gonna put her in an aluminum tin, cover it, and I'm gonna put that over the charcoal. All right, folks, this is about three hours and 15 minutes. Uh, all the sugar that's in that rub, you can see it's starting to burn a little bit. So I want to bring these and get them covered up. I'm going to put a little bit of butter on there and then uh, some unsalted vegetable broth in there. Give us a nice flavor, get this covered, get it back on the grill for maybe, maybe an hour. I, I don't like to do the two-hour boiling. Uh, one hour is just fine. So give you a look, see when they come off in about an hour and then for the sauce. All right, that was that was one hour. You can see we got some pull back there. I don't want to, I don't want to oversteam these because then it just turns into mush. So we're gonna take these off, apply some barbecue sauce back on the grill. You're probably saying, what are you using for barbecue sauce? <laughs> Open pit. I, I've had some people comment positively, positively, and I've had people say nasty things about this stuff. I don't know. I love it. Vinegar base. It's the original, and it is awesome. So back on the grill we go. Oh man, I'll tell you what folks, that was uh, that was about six hours right there. Uh, this turned out fantastic. Look at those taters. Taters, carrots, and mushrooms. Got a tear in that and those ribs. <laughs> Look at the color on that. That is uh, nicely done. Nicely. Oh my gosh. Look, look at that. Take a little taste test here. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Smoke ring goes all, all the way through. That's that's impressive. Those are good ribs. <laughs> Thumbs up, folks. If you made it this far, 
Tom Horseman's YouTube, please subscribe. Um, and as always, leave a comment, and I can't say it enough. Thanks for watching.